This one thing can prevent you from getting to where you want to go on your awakening journey. There are so many who are awakening, who are emerging, who are remembering their God spark, expanding in Christ consciousness. But this one thing can delay, can hold you back from really realizing the fullness of all that you came to remember. Before I tell you what that is, I want to read to you from a book that I just finished reading. Big old thick book. And it is I Know This Much Is True by Wally Lamb. It was so good. I actually have read it twice. When I began reading it, I thought, well, this is familiar. And as I continued to read it, I realized I read this already, but I sensed that I was supposed to continue reading it and get even more the second time through. And oh my goodness, it was so good. Run, don't walk and get this book and read it. It's worth it. I'm going to read to you just a few of the paragraphs that set the stage for that one thing that can delay, hold you back from reaching this expanded consciousness of knowing who you are as, uh, as God's spark and coming into that power, this one thing. And believe me, I know, and I'm so jazzed about it because it's the one thing that held me back. Okay, so let's dig in. So this is going to be a little snippet where our main character is having a therapy session with his doctor, his uh, uh, psychologist, psychiatrist, therapist, and I hope you enjoy it just like I did. This is what it says. When I finished, she sighed. What your girlfriend did was a terrible betrayal, she said. Obviously, she is a deeply troubled young woman. And yet, she seemed stumped for a moment, lost in thought. And yet, Dominic, like you and me, like all of us, really, she is struggling. Working, I think, to develop some insight to become a better person, which is not to dismiss what she did, not at all. Tell me, how did you feel a moment ago while you were listening again to her words? I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I've listened to that damn tape so many times now, I, I don't, I guess I'm just numb. Why did you want to play the tape for me instead of just telling me about it? I, I just, I, I wanted you to hear what they did to me. I mean, taking the most intimate thing that two people can do together and, well, I just wanted you to hear it in her own words. So, you are not so much interested in exploring your feelings about Joy's betrayal or the failure of your relationship. You are merely giving me a tour of the museum. The museum? I, I, I don't follow you. You're your, your museum of pain, your sanctuary of justifiable indignation. I, I uh, well, you know, we all superintend such a place, I suppose, she said. Although some of us are more painstaking curators than others. That is the category in which I would certainly put you, Dominic. You are a meticulous steward of the pain and injustices people have visited upon you. Or, if you prefer, we could call you a scrupulous coroner. 
What do you mean? Curator of my, well, let's see. There is the monument to your having suffered a shared childhood with Thomas and the frequently revisited exhibit of your stepfather's many injustices. And of course, there's the, the piece de resistance, your shrine to your ex-wife. Uh, and now, this most recent acquisition, this tape, which you have brought for me to listen to, which, as you say, you have listened to many, many times yourself. So many times, in fact, it has made you numb. She took another sip of tea, smiling benignly. The Dominic Birdsey Museum of Injustice and Misery, she said, open year round. This could have been called the Lisa Augustine Glazier Museum of Injustice and Misery. Open year round. That was most certainly the one thing that was holding me back, slowing, restraining, the expansion of my consciousness. And that was my victimhood mentality. My belief system that I was owed a different life than the one I got. That I should have gotten more fairness. I was treated unfairly and I should have had a different life than the one I had. And I was a victim of my circumstances. And something wasn't right about that. It should have been different. I resisted the life that I had, always thinking this isn't the life I was supposed to have. But don't you understand that in my resistance to receive and not just accept, but allow graciously the life that I had, the one that I had been given to me to experience, that in my resistance to that, in my denial of wanting it, I couldn't go any further in my expansion of consciousness, in my awakening of who I am as God's spark, incarnating and remembering who I am. It was when I began to see other people as doing the very best that they knew how to do and approaching every person in my story with compassion, not belittling my pain, not making it nothing, but actually allowing myself to feel it for the first time, not to swim in it, not for the purpose of blame, not for the purpose of marinating in it and proving to the world, you know what? I was wronged. There was a, a book I read one time and the author said, do you wanna be right or do you wanna be healed? And this person was delaying healing because they were afraid that if they healed, then everything they had gone through didn't really matter. Either they were wrong or the pain that they experienced wasn't that big of a deal. And the fact of the matter is we can feel our pain and heal and still honor the journey that we, that we experienced. 
But when I stopped making my journey be wrong, and when I stopped making the players Hmm. When I started seeing the players in my life, the people in my life as awakeners, when I started seeing the people who had hurt me as, you are here for a reason. It's got to be more than just to hurt me. What are you doing? And when I realized that they were there to help me awaken and remember that they were almost there to jar me awake, to shake me awake to a different reality and a different way of seeing things and experiencing life. It's when this, the hmm, things started bubbling up to be experienced and felt, and I allowed that. And what then came underneath was this remembrance of who I am as God, spark, having a human experience. And then I started remembering how powerful I am. And then them playing the victim card and the lack card. Why would I do that? I'm powerful. I'm abundance. I don't just have abundance. I am abundance. But it was when I stopped being the curator of the museum of my own pain and misery. When I stopped keeping a log of all the artifacts, of all the ways that I'd been done wrong. It was when I, oops, sorry, that's the air conditioner. It's making a noise, I apologize. It's when I began to say the life that I'm living is exactly the one I'm supposed to be living. The life that I had is exactly the one I was supposed to have. Why? Because that's the one I had. So I not only accept it, but I allow it fully and I receive it with gratitude. Mmm. And then life went from becoming a museum to becoming a frickin' festival, a party. If you want to hear more about this, let me know in the comments below, and I'll talk to you more about different, very applicable life, real life things that you can do to open yourself up to remembering and going from a museum, which I love museums, by the way, but metaphorically a museum to the party. My name is Lisa and I am Energy Gale and I do one-on-one -on -one consultations where I help you, hmm, where I hold space for you to remember the powerful being that you are. We unpack your story and we find out where you have leaked power. And we, find, we help you find your power again because you are a powerful being. I hope this has helped you remember that you are not just a curator in the museum, but you are the MC of the party called Your Life on Earth. Remember to subscribe if this has helped you. Like, uh, sh uh, comment, and share. I appreciate you, and I'll see you next time, everyone.